cash or deposit for like another 10, 20 years. Like this is valuable stuff that you guys, you need to treat it like that valuable because it is. It really is extremely, extremely valuable. So I use this cover sheet in order to document that that's my three ring binder for the trust. And I, I don't have it under safekeeping right now because I'm working on it still and I'm putting extra stuff in there and I'm going through and making amendments to and, and adding different meetings and stuff that we're doing. So, you know, I have it out in the open now, but, you know, when you're done with it and you don't need to really have a, additional board meetings until issues come up, which it, you might have two, three, four years in a row where you don't really need any board meetings. Okay, you might want to have maybe like one meeting a year just to document that you had a meeting, you discussed that there was no important business to discuss. Everyone is going to renew their positions as trustees and everything is going to go smoothly and uh, uh, no, we're not paying the beneficiaries yet or we are paying the beneficiaries or whatever this case is. You know, you may want to just have some documentation. Once a year is a good rule and instead of just having a trust on the shelf for five or ten years. It could be interpreted like it's not a real trust, okay? But you, you, you know, you, you set it aside and put it under safekeeping when you're when you're done formalizing everything and you don't plan on having a meeting for a while. You know, keep it under safekeeping and don't don't leave it around for people. You know, the dog to eat it. Um, <laughs> you know, do you guys do that with your homework? You leave it around for the dog to eat and then you go to school and you're like, uh, you know, the dog ate my homework and. You know, that's the oldest excuse in the book. So don't go run into, run into a courtroom and tell the judge, well, I had this private express trust, but the dog ate it. You know, keep it under safekeeping, guys. Come on. This is critical stuff. This is critical stuff here. Okay? And you could put the passport, right, in, in, that, in that too. Any other important documents for the trust, right? The, that's the trust's, like, identification, right? The, the passport, you, obviously, I'm sure you guys keep your driver's license and stuff in your wallet and stuff, but... You know, now you know where it is. You know, you know, your passport and other identifying information like that. Um, you, you're keeping all that in one place. So you can keep stuff like that in, in there. Anything related to this, you know, bank account information for Mark John Smith Trust, etc. So this is a nice little cover sheet. It's nice and pretty. You could design one on your own. Okay, you don't need our documents. You can design one on your own. Have fun with it. Have a trust party. Have popcorn. You know, have some wine. Put on some music in the background. You know, the number one way you guys can be successful, I think, over the term, is to develop friendships, meet like-minded people. It's really something that um, I think that the majority of people that are studying this material, this kind of material, are missing. They're not really making an effort to go out there and meet like-minded people. So we hope to be changing that in 2015 and help to be um, connecting people in in, in, the, in in their in the who live in the same area that are on our uh, multi-thousand, uh, you know name long um, contact uh, membership list. Okay, so we, we really want to help make an impact on your life in, 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 uh, in, in many ways. Okay, so anyways, this is, this is just like, a, like a, something that you could put on the back of it or someone, it, when you open the first page, the first little sheet might there might say this, identification of parties, creator, funder, exchanger, trustee, second trustee, secretary, just so that you know. Like if this is new to you and you're creating your first trust, just so that you know because over time you might have five or ten trusts, right? And once you learn this once, you get it. It's second nature. So if you guys are taking a lot of this in, this is a trust for a specific purpose, but you can duplicate and, and change and edit these templates. There's going to be different templates for different declarations of trust, for different um, purposes, land trusts for real estate, business trusts for uh, running businesses through. There's different kinds, holding trusts for holding large amounts of assets in the common law, gold and silver, etc. You know, there's lots of things that you can do. Once you learn the trust game, you can do a lot of really cool stuff. But the trust game is important because, um, again, your legal name is a trust and you've got to take control of your legal name before you ever do that UCC1 stuff and all these stuff after that, which we're not going to have time to cover this, this week, but we'll cover some of it, uh, you know, next week. And we'll, we'll, we'll open it up. We'll hope to have... Uh, um, next week we won't be, you know, blocking the 102nd person off the webinar. I really feel, you know, <laughs> I didn't expect that to happen. So next week, uh, you know, hopefully we'll have 200 people on the webinar. Okay, that would be really neat. Um, so let me get back to the script, and then um, we'll try to we'll try to wrap things up, and we'll just pick up over the next two three weeks, and uh, um, we'll give you guys an opportunity to get this first step, you know, uh, cemented in your in your in your head. 
And of course, if you guys want to, you know, contribute and support what we do, we have a status correction course. Make sure you just give us a call during the day. Go to the website, click around it, read about it. Um, if you really want to go into hardcore with the full process and all that's involved with it, and become a student and then uh, be applicable to be an apprentice that gets paid as an intern to work with our clients to do these processes for them, then you definitely want to sign up for our status correction course and uh, do, do a little catch up because we're already five weeks into it. But this is all the material that we teach. This is an overview of um, a lot of different processes. We're just covering the initial trust process. Um, this is some additional you know, information and so on and so forth about, uh, about it. But you can call the number and talk with Jay about it and he'll give you the um, particulars and uh, so on and so forth. So let me finish the script. Um, okay, great. Put today's date. Okay, so 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 you got your second trustee to solemnly pledge, raise the right hand. Now, do you have to do this? What do you guys think? Do you have to have your each trustee swear in to pledge? I solemnly pledge to manage, protect, and preserve the trust estate through the prudent exercise of powers and authorities provided to me by this contract, Declaration of Trust, John Henry Doe Trust. Let me see what you guys think. Do you guys think that it's mandatory to do that? I have my opinion about that. Wow, we got a lot of questions here. Oh yeah, special guest. He was supposed to call in. Um, I'm kind of on a roll here going over this stuff, so I'm not going to call him. Um, next week for sure. He, yeah, next week for sure. We're going to have a special guest on that's going to co-host uh, with me. Oath and swearing is contract must do. Or affirming. You don't have to swear. You know, some people religiously, they're against swearing. I understand that. You may want to affirm, right? Yeah, you can recite from these notes, uh, Hunter. Okay, someone said yes. They think that it's necessary. Yeah, we'll repost the webinar. Um, thanks for the hard work. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate it. You know, sometimes some bad apples spoil my, uh, you know, my, you know, well, they don't really spoil anything, but <laughs> I kind of laugh at it when people are, like, criticizing, uh, and then they're not even doing anything. Uh, all right, let's just jump, let's just jump here. Um, I, I think that it's, it doesn't hurt, okay? When people become police officers, judges, politicians, the president, they swear in. It's just a one sentence, you know? And for you to be able to say, I witnessed this person raise the right hand and affirm, I solemnly pledge to manage, protect, and preserve the trust estate through the prudent exercise of the powers and authorities provided to me by this contract, Declaration of Trust, John Henry Doe Trust. Uh, hey, and then they signed something? I mean, that's as, as solid as you can get. Okay, but it's a little more than just signing the paperwork. Okay, great. So put today's date on it. Make a copy for your records. Keep the original in the trust minutes. Send the original to me for as I will be the secretary to keep the official books and records at whatever the location is. And then, you know, so you're, you're, you're you know, your second trustee is kind of under training under you. If they don't know enough, you're just going to tell them in the meeting. You're just going to say, okay, great. You swore in. Sign this. Make let's make a copy. Put the date on it. You keep it. You're going to keep these trust minutes and records, and I'm going to keep my copy. So now you may want to discuss at the meeting, you know, should we send some notices to the government, the Secretary of State, uh, for the mismanagement of the trust, um, so on and so forth, UCC1. If you want to talk about all that, you can, um, or you can just go afterwards and do it on your own. It's just an idea. You know, what, what are we doing with this trust? Where are we going with this? What are we doing? You can educate to that second trustee if they're... Um, not new to this process. You can take the lead and take the role so that you can educate them and then you can be their second trustee um, when they set their trust up this way. All right, next order of business. We have a proposal for the trust from the exchanger, whatever the exchanger's name is. It could be a person, company, man or woman, or a person, a trust, an association, a church, or a company. <clears throat> 
we have a proposal from the exchanger which is attached as an addendum to this meeting. Whoever the exchanger's name is has offered to pledge this security agreement so and so in this uh, property, whatever, the ring, the bar of gold, the pencil, whatever it is, into the trust. Do we have and are all members of the board reviewing, reviewing the bill? Okay, so it's just the two of you. So you're looking at that bill of sale. You got a copy of the security agreement. You read and reviewed that. Good. So just have both people look at it and approve it. Okay. Okay. I approve this. Okay. Um, or I motion for the board. The, the formal way to say it is I motion for the board, you know, to review and approve this. Okay. I, I approve it. I second it. Okay. We carry it. And it's resolved that this is approved. This exchange. Now we, now we document and sign the documents. Okay. So that's kind of like how it goes. I don't know if you need me to like really read. Oh, we're almost done. Um, okay. So just saying out loud, you know, um, okay, you reviewed it. What do you think? Should we discuss it? Oh, there's nothing to discuss. I agree with it. Okay, well, um, I motion the board to approve of this exchange. Second trustee says, I second the motion. And then you say, okay. The chairperson, which is you, the first trustee, says, okay, it is carried and resolved. Let the record show that John Henry Doe Trust has approved the security agreement, you know, 0513-1975, JHDSA and um, authorize the issuing of one certificate unit or 25% you know, uh, certificate interest for the exchanger, whatever the exchanger's name is. Now, can the secretary, Mr. Uh, Mark Dennis Awesome, can, can you please document this in the Schedule A of the trust? Let's make sure that within 30 days, one of the trustees, either you or me, send the certificate to the beneficiary with a cover page notice. All right, cool. And then you can set that aside with that notice to beneficiaries that I was talking about. Can we agree that the notice I've drafted up? Okay, it, and then boom, you both agree on, you review that notice. Uh, you know, you review the notice, you say this is all good, okay, and then it's resolved. We, we, we agree with that, we agree that we're going to send that to the beneficiary, and it's all good. You can even put that into the envelope and write out the envelope ready to mail it out, but there's no need to mail that out right away. You can mail it out, you know, within 30, 60 days, something like that, um, uh, with, after the meeting, okay to send the, um, the beneficiaries their, uh, their certificate and the cover page. So, okay, it is resolved, okay? And then you've got the official identifying stickers that you could put in the trust property to identify the trust property. Um, and within 30 days, uh, any other property that's put into the trust can be tagged as trust property. You could take photographs and then put those photographs, um, submit them to the board, have both trustees sign it, put them in the books and records, so that you always have a photographic forensic evidence um, of the trust property, um, what it looks like, you know, um, a picture of it. Very powerful stuff in case the property ever gets seized and you need to put a claim on it. The trust shall have a policy to put a sticker on certain tangible property that a trustee deems necessary and take a photograph of the property with a sticker on security purposes. Okay, do you, you have to do that? No, you don't have to do that. I'm just going above and beyond throwing, you know, anything you guys might need. Next order of business, the trust is in immediate need of a person or persons to serve as managing directors and secretary. The managing director's responsibilities are two. And then this was just a copy. This is just like a, like a bullet point of that, um, what we discussed in here. Okay, the managing directors will be authorized to conduct day-to-day -day routine business, to hold trust board meetings, authorized to open one or more bank accounts. Okay, so I just put all that stuff in here, and they say the secretary's responsibilities are to keep meeting minutes, to blah, blah, blah. Respect, keep, preserve the privacy, the trust, business dealings, records, and the like. To not divulge private information to third parties or governments or courts without express consent of the board. Blah blah blah, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So once you've outlined the responsibilities of the managing director and the secretary, you guys approve the positions. You sign that acceptance as trustee. It's just very simple. It just basically says that you're accepting and pledging to manage, protect, and preserve and exercise the powers of the trust estate. Okay? And you've got one as well for the second trustee to sign, which is a little different. Okay? Signed by two witnesses. Okay? And there you go. Now, discussion. I make a motion to have myself, John Henry, the family Doe, be managing director. You know, and I have to have you be the second trustee, be the secretary. Okay? Do, you, do we need to discuss this? Before we vote on it, right? Before I move the board to make a vote, Right? Why not have a little discussion about it first? Okay? Are we clear about about it? You know, your second trustee might say, "Well, what are the conditions of this?" Let's discuss. Is there liability? Well, we've got hold and harmless agreements here. 
that eliminate your liability. Where do we got that? Uh, yeah, we've got this hold harmless agreement that limits liability be signed by you know the first trustee. There's also the second trustee is going to have their own version. Um, well, it will act as a bond, and the trust assets will will uh, be secured to, to to incur any liability. You will sign as a trustee to make trust liable, not individually. Blah blah blah. Can we agree on a unanimous resolution on these hold harmless agreements, or would you like to counter offer or add anything to it, or make any adjustments to the contract? Okay, boom, ready to go. Let's discuss the terms of getting out of this position. If at any point in time you want to resign out of this position. You know, the contract for your acceptance as a trustee says that you can leave, or the Declaration of Trust says that you can leave at any time with a resolution of the Board of Trustees as soon as another competent individual is appointed to take your place so that there's not a spot left vacant. So you must give us notice, and the trust will have 90 days to select a second competent individual to replace you the moment you leave. Because, again, you always need two trustees, so you always want to do that. You always want to have those terms in there so your tr second trustee doesn't resign and bail on you and leave you back with only one trustee, which is a big problem. Okay, let's vote. Okay, I move, I move us to approve this, this, and this. Okay, I second that motion. Let the record show the motion is carried and is hereby resolved that so-and-so will serve as the managing director and so-and-so will serve as a secretary trustee. Sign this, sign this. You make a copy, put it in the trust records. I get my copy. Boom. Each trustee may sign and resubmit to the records of the trust and keep a copy for yourself. All harmless agreement. Okay. Next order of business is to approve this abstract of trust and banking resolution. So the same deal, you motion, you resolve. It could be really quick, 30 seconds. You know, I motion, I second, it's carried, boom. Okay? If you're not familiar with that language, just go on YouTube and type in Robert's Rules of Order or read the book or get the audio book, Robert's Rules of Order Demonstration. That's a good one. Listen listen to this chick. She's fun to, to look at. <laughs> listen to this chick talk about it, okay? Uh, Robert's Rules of Order Demonstration. I watch a lot of her stuff. I like her. But uh, how to conduct a meeting. See, I, I can't vouch for anyone else's stuff because I haven't seen it yet, but just use your judgment. You can in, in, in 15 minutes, you can really pick up the idea if you're a bright guy or a bright gal. You can really pick up what the idea is. You don't have to read Robert's Rules of Order, but I'm just referencing it, you know, letting you know where the basic um, criteria for having an official formal uh, board meeting comes from. This is the rules. It's like the Black's Law Dictionary of having board meetings, okay? You know, the process of making a motion and second, carrying, resolved, boom, done, right? When you have a meeting, there needs to be a chairperson, right? Someone volunteers, I'm, I, you know, can I be the chairperson in this meeting, right? Um, or in the declaration of trust, it might say that the first trustee is always going to be the chairperson. You might want to put that in your declaration of trust. Okay, so there's all these things. There's all these little things to put in your declaration of trust as you learn this stuff that you pick up over time, okay? But anyways, the bottom line is you propose something. Do we need to discuss it? I motion for this. You second it. It's carried. Boom, it's resolved. Now we sign the document. That's basically it. So any documents, and, and you don't need to do that for every document. If you've got the rules, say that the managing director can do certain things without uh, the, having a board of trustees meetings, it says here, the managing director will be authorized to conduct day-to-day -day routine business without need for board action. Okay. Now what that is might be more clearly defined in the declaration of trust as well. Okay. Declaration of trust is really, I've seen declarations of trust um, uh, Brandon has a good one that's like 30, 40 pages and stuff. So you might want to hook up and get get something like that. That's even more as your as your knowledge and ability to use trusts and uh, understanding of them and getting more complicated over the course of your learning curve. Um, the the I think he got that from like the art of passing the buck mostly. If you get the art of passing the buck stuff, it's real deep into trust. But this is good enough. This is sufficient enough for this especially since this trust is not really going to be dealing with a large amount of assets, so you don't need to really overthink um, things because there's no real worst-case scenario. You really just want to make sure that your second trustee doesn't bail on you and that they're trustworthy and loyal and dedicated to what you're doing here with your uh, sovereignty and everything that you're doing. So that's the real purpose of this trust. There's other 
things that we can refer you to on trust. We are coming out with a trust product as well uh, later on in the year um, in helping with the management, the bookkeeping, the accounting, the filing of taxes, and the keeping of your ledger and your profit loss statements and uh, writing off expenses and all the different uh, tricks of the trade of managing, running, and establishing a proper LLC, a proper board of directors, a proper five-year business plan, a proper board proposal for a corporation, an LLC, or a trust. And then on top of that, the people that graduate from that class will be prepared and ready to do the business line of credit uh, approval process that you can get a $100,000 to a $1 million line of credit. You've got to have a five-year business plan. You've got to have uh, a few people on your board of directors. You've got to have some things in place to legitimize your business and the prospects that your business is going to prosper or that your trust is going to prosper. And it's not that difficult. Using a Dun and Bradstreet number it doesn't matter if you have terrible credit. This is based on the Dun and Bradstreet number, which is a corporation's credit number not your personal social security number and you are not being the personal guarantee on the loan so they don't even really look at your personal credit as a significant factor but if you click on this you can read that we're coming down and offering huge lines of credit you don't pay us if we don't get you a huge line of credit it's a simple uh, cut and dry to the chase it's gonna work every time but you gotta be officially business minded you gotta up your game you gotta up your formalization uh, of your business dealings. You're not just doing business in your name with a DBA. you, you got to be dealing with a corporation, dealing with an LLC, dealing with a trust, having board meetings, having a business plan, having some basic things in place, having some basic accounting and book ledgering skills and, and, and meeting minutes and things like that so that you can run it properly, be legitimate, have competent people running the company, and you, we can help you get approved for a 100 to a 1 million dollar, a 100,000 to a 1 million dollar line of credit. No joke. This is the real deal. You don't pay if we don't get you the line of credit, but it's not even that. We're going to help you to check off the criteria of items that you need to have before you even apply for the loan. Uh, excuse me, before you even apply for the line of credit. It's a credit card. It's not a loan. It gives you a limit to spend but you're not necessarily in debt unless you start to spend on it. Okay, it's a line of credit. It's a credit card for your company. And generally we can get that in about 90 days. Okay, so a lot of you are saying, what's the payoff? Oh, I gotta learn about meetings and I gotta read Robert's Rules of Order and I gotta learn I gotta I gotta have a second trustee and all this stuff. There's a lot of mother effing payoff if you guys take this stuff seriously. And we're really looking for some serious students. And the best serious students are going to be business partners of ours at some point later on in the year. So there's a lot of payoff to learning this stuff. And I don't know what you have going on and, 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 and what situations. We all have different things that are in front of us right now that we want to deal with. That's why we were you know, compelled to learn this stuff. And everybody's at a different place, but everybody can learn from the proper management and creation of a trust and having board meeting minutes and documenting uh, bills of sale and different things like that. It's just some basic bookkeeping and accountability and documentation that, you know, a meeting of the minds did happen, this and that, whatever. Okay? So anyways, there are some other optional things about that we're not going to cover that you can throw into the same meeting. Um, but at the end, you say there will be no more business before the board. The meet, this meeting is adjourned until such time when either trustee requests or requires a meeting. And that's basically it. So that is the sample script. I'm going to put here, begin script. That is just the sample script for someone who's never done something like that. And I hope that that's a valuable product. I hope that that's a valuable thing to, uh, you know, to give to you guys. So, um, you know, there you go. All right, winding things down. I didn't have the time to really go over all this stuff. We'll continue next week. Um, so I will answer any questions. It's getting pretty late. 
I'm going to close this up here. So, you know, the first step, and, and we got a step by step by step. And I also, one thing I do want to also show you is that we've got an, in a detailed instruction step by step by step of the documents and, and, and what documents are signed. And then when you're done, after the security agreement is signed, where you go with your, your UCC and what states are accepting UCC filings and just very detailed notes, Secretary of State's offices and how to, there's different versions of the UCC forms. Let me just show you that. You've got the one for New York. This is a sample of how it's filled out. Um, well, it says type information here. I guess it didn't save the actual information. But we're gonna we're gonna edit and fix that. We're gonna we're gonna add it up for. Oh, here we go. No, we didn't. Well, it looks like my materials didn't copy it that well. Well, oh no, this was the other folder. Okay, so this is the Florida one. Okay, it's a little bit different. They have a, they have actually privatized their UCC filings, so there's a private company that actually does UCC filings. It's not the Department of State. Very interesting. Then there's this version, which is the national version.